Can we have the choir come up, please? Everyone help us sing.
Amen. Well, we want to welcome you back tonight to Tri-State Baptist Temple. We're excited to be back tonight and looking forward to finishing our day here in the Lord's house. And uh, this morning was a blessing to be able to hear from uh, Brother Nestor as he uh, just showed us the work that uh, God was doing uh, in the Philippines and uh, the church that he has planted there. He spoke about wanting to start another uh, church in the near future. And uh, it was just a blessing to be able to see his work and then to hear him preach the word of God. And uh, so we're thankful for that today. And uh, we're excited about that. I'm thankful that tonight uh, we get to hear uh, the Word of God preached again, and uh, we're excited to have that in just a little bit. But we do want to uh, make a few announcements this mor- or this evening, remind you about some of the things going on. We did have a meeting right before the service today uh, in regards to our uh, the, the King's Turf uh, Youth foot- Flag Football Program that we are uh, considering uh, participating with at our church, and so uh, we had that meeting, and uh, I just uh, got some people to sign up if they are interested. If you forgot about that meeting or weren't here uh, and want to uh, uh, sign up, the clipboard is right up here, and you can sign up if you're interested in that. Uh, but it's up here, uh, and uh, so we wanted to let you know about that. Don't forget, if you're a deacon or a, mis- a part of the missions committee, to look in the bulletin and check those dates. Uh, for a couple meetings that will be in the month of September. Don't want to forget about that. Uh, Don't want to forget as well about our church-wide outreach on Tuesday. and uh, We're uh, uh, excited about the opportunity to go into our community and uh, just continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, We want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. And uh, We want to grow in our going. And it was, uh, that was the last uh, thing the Lord Jesus spoke of before he ascended into heaven. He told the church to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And uh, You know, and uh, as you're studying the word of God, you know, if you see it one time, it's important. You know, if you see it uh, twice, it's really important. Uh, the Great Commission is recorded five different times in the Word of God. In every gospel and in the book of Acts, uh, it's recorded for us the words that Jesus told us to go and to tell others about Him. So it's an important uh, part of the Christian life and serving the Lord. We want to encourage you to come and be a part of that on Tuesday. If you're a lady, don't forget about the next ladies' meeting on uh, the 27th on Thursday. You want to come and be a part of that at 6.30 on that Thursday evening. And uh, so lots of things that are going on uh, in our church, uh, lots of things to be in prayer about and looking forward to. Our teenagers are going to go to a, a youth rally this Saturday. We're excited about that. And I got, I got all the permission slips in this evening, I think. And this morning I said that in the service because I only had two. So I wanted to make sure they remembered that. But uh, they all did well getting them in today. So we're excited about uh, the opportunity to do that, go to Chill Howie here uh, preaching and uh, uh, spending some time together, so I hope you'll pray for that uh, for us, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, this time, we'll ask our men to come. We want to take up a tithes offering, and faith promise, missions offering here this evening. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. Thank you. It's a good place to be tonight, and Sunday evenings it's time to take up our change offering for camp, and so I hope you have something ready to go for that, and we'll uh, receive that special offering tonight, start laying that up and have it, and uh, we'll be uh, praying about looking forward to summer camp next summer, and we had such a great year this year, and 
Brother Nestor was a blessing at camp as well as all the other young men and women from Marietta did a great job and so we're thankful for them and good services today. So uh, if you're uh, elementary or preschool age boy or girl tonight, we need your help. Come on up here and give us a hand and help us take up that offering tonight. All right. Amen. All right, we're going to pray together and we'll let you get to work here. Father, we thank you for your goodness today and your grace. And Lord, thank you for uh, boys and girls. And Lord, we thank you for summer camp. And we just pray, Father, that you'll uh, just give our heart as a church a continued and deepened burden for reaching young people. And uh, Lord, that we'll desire, God, to invest in the ministries of, uh, of our church through camp and through so many other things that we do to uh, reach the hearts of boys and girls. So bless the offering tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hold your hand up if you have some offering and they'll come by and pick that up. Good job. Appreciate the good music and the choir. Doing a great job all day today and it has been a good day to be here in the Lord's house. And So we're thankful for you being here tonight as well. I uh, hope you will come out and go with us on Tuesday night. We meet at 6.30 in the ministry center for a few moments and uh, just have a challenge from God's word and prayer together and then we divide up and go out and, and uh, just knock on doors and invite people to Sunday school and church and leave something if no one is home and uh, we want uh, uh, to just uh, do all we can while we can to reach people with the gospel and invite people to Sunday school and church. So I, I hope you'll help us. We want to grow in the number of people in our church family that go. Uh, husbands and wives can go. Uh, you know, Sunday school teachers ought to go, and uh, uh, everybody that has any role of ministry in our church, we ought to go. We ought to go out and knock on doors and invite people to Sunday school and church. And uh, this past, uh, the, the last time that we did go together, uh, I just uh, asked everyone that answered the door, how often do local churches come by to visit? How many times do people come and knock on your door? And in almost every case, the answer was never, uh, except for the Jehovah Witnesses. They're the only ones. And uh, we have the truth. We have God's way of salvation, Jesus Christ, the gospel. And uh, we want to go and reach people with it. So I hope you'll come out and be with us on, uh, on this coming Tuesday night. And we can use your help. And you may run into somebody that only God could use you to reach. And uh, so I hope you'll be with us. Well, it's good to be here. Enjoyed a good day, and I want you to take your Bibles with me for a little while and open them to the, to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, the letter to the church in Rome, chapter 8. And I'm going to preach tonight on this subject, thinking like Jesus Christ. Thinking like Jesus Christ. Uh, we've been preaching on growing in Christ-likeness. Growing in Christ-likeness. And if there's anything we ought to want with all of our heart, it's that Christ can be seen in our lives. Christ can be seen in us. And uh, we should want to be more and more like Jesus. And so today I hope you'll listen as we preach on thinking like Jesus Christ. And I'll probably preach on this subject again, and, uh, but we want to look at some truth tonight. Beginning in verse 1 of Romans chapter 8, follow along with us as we read in our Bibles down to verse number 8. 
Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. The Bible said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And we'll stop right there, but I want you to listen tonight as we think about thinking like Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for a good day. And Lord, we thank you for what was accomplished in the morning services today. And dear Lord, we pray that as we open our Bibles tonight, our hearts will be open to truth. That God, we will already, God, have a desire in our heart to hear from you. God, that you would lead and guide us. And Lord, that you would show us in our lives where we need to grow in Christ's likeness so that you can be seen in us. And Lord, as you are seen in us, you'll draw men and women, boys and girls, to yourself. And Lord, our hearts and lives will be pleasing to you. And God, you're so worthy, God, of our lives uh, being vessels, Lord, through which you can be glorified. So speak to our hearts tonight. May we be obedient to you. May we respond to you when you speak to us in the, in the, in the innermost parts of our heart and mind. God, may we respond. And Lord, we just pray if someone's come to church today, that Lord... They uh, maybe have not ever received you as their personal Savior. I pray tonight they'll be saved. Thank you for folks in the morning services today. And Lord, we pray the seed of God's Word will bring forth fruit. And so we commit these things to you tonight. We have no confidence in the flesh, but Lord, only in the Holy Spirit and in your Word. And so do tonight what only you can do. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. You know, the mind of man, as we read the Word of God here, the mind of a man and the mind of Jesus Christ are fundamentally opposed. They are, they are, they are exactly the opposite of one another. In fact, God's Word says here in verse 7 that the carnal mind of a man is at enmity with God's. Uh, the word means at odds with God. Uh, where God is on one side, the mind of a man is on the other side. And this is important. This is important because it determines what kind of life that we're living. In Proverbs chapter 23, in verse 7, the first part of that verse of Scripture says, For as as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As we think, how we think determines who and what we are. And I want to be like the Lord Jesus. And I want to think like Him. And this is important. You know, how you think about things determine the most important things in your life. What you think about things, how you think about things. This is an important thing because uh, it, it determines what we love. Uh, how we think about something determines whether we love it or not. How we think about something determines the priorities of our life. Where we place them in order of importance to us. This is based on how we think. Uh, what we invest our time in, what we invest our talents and treasures in. All of these things are determined by what we think about them, how we think about them. And the Bible contrasts the two ways in which a born-again believer can think and the way that men think. Uh, They are portrayed for us here in this passage of Scripture. Some men think carnally and some men think spiritually. Some men can only think carnally because they're lost without Christ. But others can think spiritually because they've been born again by the grace of God. If we define the word carnal, it it has this definition. The word carnal means of the flesh. It means fleshly. It means pertaining to the body and its appetites. 
Uh, it has to do with sensual, sensuality. Uh, carnal, the carnal things are the things of the senses, things that we can see and taste and smell and touch and feel. That has to do with the senses, the flesh, they're carnal. Uh, to be carnally minded is to think about things carnally of the flesh. This is the way an unsaved man thinks. It's the only way he can think. It's all that he knows. Uh, he thinks about life carnally. Uh, he, he, he is fleshly. He's of the flesh, in the flesh. He's driven by uh, his senses, by the desires and appetites and lusts of the flesh. A carnally minded man thinks about all things with an earthly perspective. He thinks about things in the, in the, in the way of, uh, of, uh, of the short term, of the earth, of life uh, here in this world. The Bible says... To think that way is death. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. A man who thinks carnally will make fleshly decisions. He'll love, he'll lust in the flesh. He'll be driven by selfish desires. He'll set as priorities the things of the world, getting, gaining, having, experiencing what the world has to give. He'll give no consideration to the eternal He'll not think about the eternal things. The choices and decisions of a carnally minded man will lead him down a path ultimately of destruction. Often people who make carnal choices and think carnally, their relationships can be destroyed. Marriages can be destroyed. Homes broken. Innocent people in their lives that love them can be hurt. You know, ultimately for a lost man, a carnally minded man, their soul will be forever lost in the lake of fire. They'll be, they'll, be, they'll be destroyed. Their soul will suffer in torment forever. This is the way of a carnal man. That's the way a lost man thinks. But you know, even though you may be born again today, you still live in the flesh. We're still walking around in these bodies of flesh. And we know that our flesh and its minds are directly opposed to the mind of God. They're opposed to the Spirit of Jesus Christ which lives within us. And every day there is and will be a choice that has to be made, either consciously or subconsciously, about the mind, our mind. And we've got to make the decision about how we're going to think about things. Carnally minded or spiritually minded. A spiritually minded man makes choices and decisions based in a spiritual way. He does it with eternity in mind. He never ever loses thought that there is an eternity. There is an eternity. That this is not all there is. That this is not ultimately uh, where we will live forever. This is not ultimately uh, where our home will be forever. And a spiritually minded man makes decisions and choices based on eternity. He does it based upon and according to the truths of God's Word. This is the way a spiritual minded man thinks. A spiritually minded man, he's led by the Holy Spirit within him. This is why he's spiritually minded. Because he's minding the Holy Spirit who lives within him. A spiritually minded man will love what God loves. He will seek what God sought and seeks. He'll seek to serve the Lord. He will set his priorities on things that matter a million years from now. He'll give his time, his talents, his treasures. He'll invest them in the work of God so that true treasure may be laid up for him in heaven for the glory of God. This is the way of a spiritually minded man. The spiritually minded man will possess and know peace and he'll know joy and he'll be led safely in the way of God through a spiritually minded man, his family will be blessed. Through a spiritually minded man, loved ones and others will be blessed. And when we look at the Scripture, we see this contrast, the carnally minded man or the spiritually minded man. And it would seem that the choice would be a simple one, doesn't it? Pastor, there isn't even any decision about that. I would want to be a spiritually minded man. That, there's, not, uh, there's not any difficulty in that. It would seem the choice is a simple one. But we each know in our own lives, if we're honest, how really difficult this is. How very difficult this is. How often, too often, we live carnally minded lives. But we need spiritually minded believers today. 
spiritually minded men and women. Men and women led of the Spirit of God. In our church, we need husbands and wives who are minding the Spirit of God. Minding the Spirit of God. Having love one toward another. The love of Christ. The love of God. Submitting one to another in the love of God and in the fear of God. Unto God and unto one another. Spiritually minded husbands and wives. Homes that young men and women can model their own homes after. Their own lives. We need spiritually minded parents raising and training their children up in the fear and nurture and admonition of the God, realizing that they have uh, the eternal, divine responsibility of preparing the hearts of their children uh, someday to embrace uh, the call of the Holy Spirit to be saved, to surrender their life to Him, to ultimately go on to be a vessel that God will use. We need spiritually minded parents. We need young people, young men and women, who have the mind of Jesus Christ. Spiritually minded, thinking like Christ. You know, the way to have the mind of Jesus Christ and to live as a spiritually minded believer, this begins in our hearts. This begins in our hearts. In Proverbs chapter 4, write this scripture reference down and read it sometime. Proverbs 4, beginning in the 20th verse. The Bible said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. And I hope you know this and are familiar with this. For out of it, out of the heart, are the issues of life. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Say, Pastor, I want to think like the Lord. Well, then it begins in the heart because in our hearts are all the issues of our life. For a born-again believer to have the mind of Jesus Christ, to be spiritually minded, a spiritually minded man or woman, there's going to be a war fought in your life. It's going to be fought every day. It's fought against the flesh, the natural desires and lusts of the flesh to have what it wants to have, to be uh, what it wants to be, to have control, to make the choices, to make the decisions. It wants to watch out for itself. It wants to provide for itself what it wants. And every single day, there's going to be that conflict. And it will have to be engaged in consciously. You will have to fight that fight fully aware that you're fighting it every single day. If we're ever going to think like the Lord Jesus, be spiritually minded people, But may the Lord help us to do that every day. May the Lord help us to see how much we need to be spiritually minded. And that as long as we continue on carnally thinking and living our lives, we're never going to be able to please the Lord. Do you see that in Romans 8, verse number 8? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. May I say that that is not just speaking about the lost. But that is also speaking about believers who are not yielded to the Holy Spirit, not spiritually minded, not thinking like Christ. We cannot please the Lord. If there's anything that we ought to fear more than anything, it's to live our lives and they not be pleasing to the One who gave Himself for us. The place to begin to think spiritually is to know and to understand and to think like we should about Jesus Christ. If we want to think like Him, we have to think rightly about Him. We have to know some truth about Him. All things, all things that Jesus Christ is and all that He has done, they all revolve around one great thing. They all revolve around the cross, the work of Christ at the cross. So I want you to think about some things tonight. I'm going to be brief this evening and that's where everybody says amen real loud. But uh, we'll preach from this subject again. But I want to give you this thought tonight. Thinking like Christ. Becoming more Christ-like. Being a spiritually minded person. Begins in our heart. And I want you to think tonight about who Jesus Christ was before the cross. Who He was before the cross. I want you to turn in your Bible. I want you to turn, not just write it down, but turn your Bible with me, if you will, please, to Philippians chapter 2, because this is one of the great foundational passages in the Bible that will help us as we think about the mind of Christ, thinking like Him, thinking rightly about Him. 
And I want you to see from this passage who Jesus Christ was before He went to the cross. In Philippians chapter 2, find your place and look in verse number 3. And I'm going to read some scripture. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 3. Paul's writing under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to the believers at the church of Philippi. And he exhorts them in verse 3. And he says to them, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father." You know, if we're going to really comprehend and think like we should about what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, we need to know and understand who He was before He came. And I want you to think about this. Uh, firstly, uh, He was the eternal pre-existent God. Who was He before the cross? We know that everything about Him revolves around the cross. The greatest moment in human history was the cross work of Jesus Christ. One million years from now, when time is no more, it'll still be the greatest event in human history. The cross. The work of the cross. But why is it such a great event? Such a great event because of who Jesus was before the cross. He was the pre-existent God. He says in verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Pastor, what does that mean? I've read that over and over again. What does it mean? It means simply this, that before Jesus came into the world, born of a virgin, before He was a babe born in Bethlehem, before uh, he, uh, he came, He was the same as God. He was God. He was a member of the Trinity of the Godhead. He was co-equal, co-powerful, co-existent with God. He does not think it's robbery to be known as God because He was God. He's taking nothing away from God. He's stealing none of the glory of God because He was God. He was the Creator God. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible said in the beginning was the Word with a capital W. This is one of the proper names in the Bible that Jesus is often referred to. He's the Word. He's the Word of God. And the Word was with God. But I want you to notice the Bible said also the Word was God. He was God. John chapter 10 and verse 30, Jesus told His disciples, I and My Father are one. We are one. John 1.14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. What was the glory of Jesus Christ like? Well, John said it was the same glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And Jesus Christ was God before He came to the cross. Jesus Christ was God come in human flesh and bone. He was before the world was. And it never fails to amaze me that there has never been a time when He was not. There was never a time when He was not. He has always been. Jesus Christ was the Creator God. He created all things. He, he's the exalted One. He's worshipped above all things. In Colossians chapter 1, and write this passage of Scripture down and read it and study it and let it let it sink into your heart. But in Colossians chapter 1, the Bible's writing and speaking about Jesus. And it says in the 13th verse, Who, who, referring to Jesus Christ, hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, 
in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Who was Jesus Christ before the cross? He was the preeminent one. He was the Creator. He was the exalted one. He is the one unto whom God has relinquished all the glory of the Godhead. It all will revolve upon Christ when we're in eternity someday. He's going to be the one. I don't know how that's all going to be. I know the Holy Spirit is a person of the Godhead. I know that the only visible form uh, that we find uh, in the Scripture, we saw Him appear as a dove. We saw Him appear as flames of fire. I don't know if we'll see Him expressed in eternity, but I can tell you who will be the exalted one. It will be Jesus Christ the Son. He's going to sit on the throne and all those uh, created angels are going to encircle Him and cry out, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. All worship, all praise will be pointed to the Son, Jesus Christ. And He is God. This is who He was. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's who He was. That's who He was. And I want you to think about one other thing tonight. Not only do we know who He was, and not only do we know uh, that He was the uh, pre-existent God, but He came, God, to take man's place. He came, God came, to take man's place. In Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds, who being the brightness of His glory, and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when he, uh, when he had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as He hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. You know, Jesus Christ was God. and He had created the heavens, He had created the earth, He created everything that's in them. And He had created man to be with man. Uh, he had created man so that He could be with man forever. This is what He wanted. He wanted an eternal relationship with man, the greatest of His creations. And we know that man rejected His love. He rebelled against God. Jesus Christ was high. He's the exalted one. He was God. His was the power to create life. But He... He came to those who had sinned against Him. He came to the ones who had rejected His love and fellowship. And He came to take their place. That's a lot to think about. To think about the pre-existent God to whom all creation worships and all the creation looks to the One who will and is and forever will be, the exalted One of heaven, to whom God has given a name that's above every name, that someday every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, that the Creator God, who created man out of the dust and dirt of the earth and breathed into Him life and made Him a living soul, knowing that man would sin, knowing that man would rebel, yet loving man so much that that God came into the world to take the place of man, to take our place. And he did this so that we might be saved, so that we might have life. He came 
uh, to, uh, to come, God, come down from heaven to take the place of sinful men, to suffer for Him, to bleed for sinful man, to give His own life for sinful man so that man could be saved, so that man might have life, so that man and God might once again have the relationship God desires for them to have together. And Jesus Christ did that for you. And He did that for me. He did that for, for the world. And He was willing to leave behind position. He was willing to leave behind privilege to serve others. You say, Pastor, why did Paul remind us about who Jesus Christ was before He went to the cross? Because He wants us to have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ was to give, to sacrifice, to to, to step down into the world and become flesh and bone so that He might win the souls of men. And if we're ever going to think like Jesus Christ and have the mind of Christ, then we must be willing to do those things as well. To give up position that might be had, privileges we might enjoy, so that we can serve others. So that we can serve others. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus spoke to His disciples in an interesting passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter number 16, beginning in the 21st verse. He just told the disciples that He's going to build the church and that the foundation of the church was going to be His death, burial, and His resurrection. He would be the foundation, the cornerstone. And He tells them in verse 21, And from that time forth began Jesus to show to His disciples how that He must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And Peter took Him and began to rebuke Him, saying, Be it far from Thee, Lord, this shall not be unto Thee. And He turned and said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And what the Lord Jesus is saying to Peter is that, Peter, you're carnally minded. You're not thinking about this right. You're not thinking about what I'm going to do right. You're not thinking about eternity. You're thinking about yourself. You think about your position in some kingdom you imagine I'm going to establish here on earth. You're not thinking about this the way I'm thinking about it. And so your response to that is not the way it ought to be. And he goes on to him to say in verse 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And Jesus is helping them to understand, you have to remember who I was. That I was willing to give it all away to set it all aside that I might come so that you might have eternal life. Oh, we can, we can live a carnally minded life and we can hold on tight to our heart and we can hold on tight to our life and we can live in this world to get and gain and to have all that this world can give us. And we can have position, we can have privilege, we can have prestige and we can enjoy uh, what this world has to give but the Lord says if you continue on carnally minded earthly minded you're going to lose the opportunity that I've given you and that is to give your life to me and let me use it to be willing to give that all away to step down and step away from all of that and to serve me and to live for me and if you'll do that you'll find out that you've really won. You've really won. And someday in eternity, you're going to find out that it was worth it all. There's people in eternity today in hell who had all the world had, and yet today they realize it was all for nothing. They really had nothing. They had nothing at all. That's what the Lord says. For what is a man profited, in verse 26, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I tell you, I'd rather, I'd rather have only enough in this world. A place over my head, clothes on my back, food to eat. Only enough of what this world has. 
that I might live for and serve the Lord Jesus and make a difference in eternity. In eternity. He goes on to say in the 27th verse, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His works. Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, He said, which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. I believe we could say that today. We may see the Lord come again. And when He comes again, His reward will be with Him. His reward will be with Him. And the Lord Jesus was willing to step aside. The Bible said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. See, this is the mind of God. This is the mind of Jesus Christ. The way the mind of Christ thinks the way the spiritually minded man thinks. He said, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He lived and stepped down out of heaven and came and gave away and set aside all those things that He might serve you and I and become the sacrifice that we needed for our salvation on the cross of Calvary. And you know, He taught His disciples, He taught His disciples this great truth that they were to serve one another, that they were to look upon the things of others, to esteem others greater and better than themselves and to live their life serving Him. If we want to be spiritually minded people, if we want to have the mind of Jesus Christ, all we need to do is remember who He was before He came. Remember who He was and what He was willing to step away from. Because in comparison to that, you and I, we really don't have a whole lot to step away from. No one has ever come further down than Jesus did that He might be the Savior of our souls. We don't have so far to step down. We don't have so much to step away from that we can't serve the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord help us have the mind of Christ. May we think about things spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. Not the carnally minded ways of the death of, death of a carnally minded man. But may we think about things as the Lord Jesus Christ did. Knowing who He was and what He was willing to do for us and may the Lord encourage us that we think about these things with our hearts that we're willing to step aside and serve Him. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We have a word of prayer together. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. There could be someone who's come to church today, but in your, in your heart you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. I don't know how old the youngest person is here. I was 11 years old when I realized I was a sinner. If I died, I knew I would go to hell. I'm thankful that I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and I was saved. I never regret my salvation. I regret times of life when I didn't serve Him like I should. And I today know that I'm not doing all I ought to do or all I can do in Him. But if you're here today and you've never been saved, you never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you tonight. Why don't you step out of your seat and come and let us take the Word of God and show you from the Scriptures how you can be saved. Man, woman, boy, or girl, why don't you come tonight? And if you're here and you know the Lord is your Savior, we ought to desire with all of our heart, God, help me not to live a carnally-minded life. Help me not to live a carnally-minded life. Help me not to live and die and it not to have meant anything. Help me not to stand someday at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ who came for us, who left all for us when He comes again with His rewards in His hand. Help me not to have to stand before Him and realize I lived and died and got and gained and had all so many things the world has and lived in comfort and ease while lost souls died and perished all around me. And the name of Jesus was not lifted up, was not shared with them, 
May we not regret that. May the Lord help us today to come and say, Lord, I want to be a spiritually minded person, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a young person. You young people, you ought to desire in your heart to have a spiritual mind, a spiritual mind. Come and ask the Lord, Lord, give me a spiritual mind. I want to think about things. I never want the view of Christ of the cross and eternity to ever leave my heart and mind. I want to see all things through those things. May the Lord help us tonight. Father, we pray in Jesus' name now. Your will be done. Lord, we pray, Father, as folks respond, that God will allow you to do your work in our heart and in our life. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. And amen. Let's stand together. Some have come. You may need to slip out of your seat as you stand and come. Seek the Lord's mind. Lord, let the mind of Christ be in me. I want to think like he does. Live for what he lived for. Give my life for what he died for. May the Lord help us tonight. What do we have? Page 282 in our hymn book. We're going to sing the first verse of that. You respond as the Lord leads in your heart. <clears throat> the last verse number five. Amen. It's been a good place to be uh, today in the Lord's house, and we appreciate you being here, and we're uh, just, uh, it's just an honor to be able to come and hear the Word of God preached, and uh, uh, so I hope uh, the message will be something that you don't let just go in one ear and go out the other ear, but you'll allow the Lord to just uh, apply it to your own heart and your life, but we appreciate the message today, appreciate you uh, being here today, but uh, we are going to just close with a word of prayer, but uh, uh, we're excited now to be able to take uh, the Word of God and now live it in our life uh, throughout the week, and we look forward to being back on Wednesday and uh, being back in our place to, uh, and on Tuesday uh, to go out and practice our our uh, our faith in uh, going and uh, sharing the gospel and inviting people to church through our outreach. So we encourage you to be a part of that. But let's just finish the word of prayer, and we'll uh, be finished today. Brother John Marcello, will you pray for us, please? Amen. Yes.